Now I want to turn to uh, Tom Farrell, who is scratch building his layout. Tom, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. This evening, I'm going to show you how I scratch built one of the sign signature structures on my old rustic buff and old Gothic, and how I'm going to incorporate it on the new rustic buff and old Gothic OM30 railroad. So this is a covered bridge that I made that uh, was an exercise in how much strip wood I could consume. Uh, we talked about patience a minute ago. This, there was a lot of patience, as you'll see, in constructing this model. Um, but the end, as they say, uh, it, it's worth it in the end. So the ends justify the means. So this is how I did it. <clears throat> I started off with um, looking at plans for a truss bridge. Um, just to get some idea how they put these trusses on. The, the bridge itself is no specific uh, prototype. I went on Google and I looked at all the nice features that I liked on real covered bridges and I tried to incorporate them on my bridge. And uh, so here you see the floor and one of the walls coming up. This, um, really wasn't difficult. It was more of an exercise in patience. The key to making a bridge like this with all these components is to keep everything parallel and perpendicular and keep run out from happening. <clears throat> this is looking down at the um, floor of the bridge. I decided to put a walkway in there. So there's a walkway on either side of the track. Those rails are just temporarily in there right now. Um, but you see the Grant Line bolt, um, plastic bolt uh, uh, washer and bolt assemblies. That adds a great bit of detail to the model itself. Um, you'll see how this really comes along when it gets stained. This is the siding. This is the technique that um, I use. I start off with a uh, basically a one by six. Uh, piece of scale lumber. And uh, the first thing I did was score it with my um, um, special blade for my X Acto knife. It puts these uh, ridges on the wood. Then I stained it with uh, alcohol wash. That's the, this picture here. Then I painted it red. And then I took my scribing tool again and I went over the red to try and uh, tone that red down because obviously it was too bright here. And then I uh, um, added another wash on top of it. So it's a really a four, five step process. First, I take the wood and I scribe it with the uh, scribing tool that puts these contours on there, the wood graining tool. I stain it with a black uh, alcohol wash. I painted it with a, um, I believe I used a red acrylic. Then I scored it again with my exacto uh, scribing tool, graining tool, and uh, then I hit it with another wash. This is how I'm, you can see in the background, I, I actually stained this with a Minwax stain, uh, a golden oak. And um, this is laying those boards on one at a time. These holes here were made with a dental pick then I took an artist's pen, magic marker, it has a very stiff point on it. And I inserted that in the, uh, in the hole that I made to blacken it. And uh, there's a nice randomness to this, to this technique. Each, each board is of course in the, individually placed. This was a template that I made for the roof. Um, <clears throat> nothing more than a piece of plywood and some wood, but I needed 19 of these um, trusses. And uh, the only way to do it is with a template. And then the uh, roof itself is this, uh, I've talked about this material before. This is a ship 
decking that you can get from Micromark or North, Northeastern scale lumber. These are individually individual boards that are pre-glued together. I pre-stained this with that, uh, actually here was a brown alcohol wash. Um, <clears throat> this thing was all super glued together. See where there was a little patience involved in putting this together. It gets worse <laughs> though. <laughs> the actual shakes are individual um, two by, I think I use two by fours. I cut them one at a time on a chopper, less than a quarter of an inch, sometimes three eighths. And I individually glued them on there one at a time with tweezers over the course of about three weeks. I'd work like an hour at a time. Um, in the final model, there's over 8,000 of these. So it shows you that you're listening to a psychotic model builder. <laughs> this took an enormous amount of time. This is that um, ship siding or ship flooring. This is the underside of the uh, roof. I airbrushed it, um, highlighted it in black, and I went back with a, um, a sponge and I sponged it. I wanted to show that um, exhaust smoke had hit the top of the, um, the roof. That's a nice close up that came off very effective. You can see the detail of the ship, ship decking and all the, the trusses and the, the whole assembly is uh, pretty, pretty intricate. This is the finished decking <clears throat> and it's weathered now. And uh, there's a close up of the detail of the track. I use Grant line fish plates. You can see these bolts here, they're all rusted. There's rust that's bleeding onto the wood. It, um, it was really the, this, this model has so much time into it. It really was the focal point, the key, key structure of my last layout. It, uh, there's up close of the finished uh, siding. You see where I added the rust off the, uh, those holes and a lot of these covered bridges had uh, windows in the side of them. Or I should say some had windows in the side. I added this detail so you could see some of the highlights of the structure that I, prototypical structure I put inside. See that graining tool, how that really brings out the detail in the wood. You know, if you just use, those are quarter inch wide pieces. If you um, didn't add the graining to them, they'd look pretty dull and then pretty flat. There, they look pretty cool to me. Same with this uh, very thin material, this one by sixes. There's the finished model on my uh, old rustic buff and old Gothic. So now I don't have that railroad anymore. And I removed this, the bridge, of course. And now on the new rustic buff and old Gothic, I have a place that I call the Salt Creek River Basin. I'll show you how this bridge is going in place there. So most of the modeling for my past several weeks is off to the left of this photograph. I decided to jump ahead and um, put in this bridge. So I'm, I wanted it lower than the, the rest of the layout. So this is a two inch piece of foam and roughly a half inch piece of, uh, open cell foam here where the track comes in. <clears throat> this is going to be the where, the where the actual Salt Creek River is. So the first thing I did is uh, put wood glue down here. See all my magazines still packed away. <clears throat> and I put down a quarter inch piece of birch plywood. I wanted a high grade plywood. I glued it down and then with a pneumatic nailer, I nailed it back and forth. It's not going anywhere. I didn't want any movement with this because eventually I'll have a cast, casting material on the river. This is one of the bridge abutments. Now I, I, I bought these and they had, I was very disappointed. They had 
pockets all over them. I, I would have been better off to just hand carve my own. Um, I had to fill these with uh, filler and I had to recut all this. And basically, I'm not going to ever buy anything like that's why I scratch build everything. <laughs> so I did finish them. I put them in place here. This is going to hold the bridge. I have to weather them yet, but they're, uh, that's where they're going. I test fit the bridge there. There's all those shakes. That was quite an exercise. <laughs> here are the programs moving along. I added foam here. I like sculptable. Um, I actually have, um, it sounds crazy, but I have 150 pounds of sculptable. I have it in three big bags. Um, I just use a disposable container, a spatula and water and mix it away. It takes at least several days to dry and you get to, well, that's why they call it sculptable. You can sculpt it. Um, so there I am putting it in place with just a plain old spatula. Now to get to the other side, I had to put the foam in for the layout. And I wood glued this foam down and then I put, these are just weights, glue it overnight. And now I've sculpted them over both sides of the river. I haven't done the back yet because I'm going to build a dam back there. And uh, when I build the dam, I'll put it in place with a little shack back there, and then I'll finish the sculptor mold. That'll be another, another show, another time. There's looking to the, um, to the east of it. And there's the preliminary base colors. There's the, uh, the bridge itself. This is the uh, river basin. I'm going to put some structures along the, uh, I haven't quite detailed this out, but there'll be some sort of shacks and fishing guys and there's some sort of action on either shore. It's a very striking model, this uh, bridge, because it's a, not a lot of people model them. If they do model them, they don't normally model them as a railroad bridge. They model them as a pedestrian or automobile bridge. And again, it it's not a prototype. I like this little bump out that was on uh, one of the bridges I saw. Another bridge had these windows on it, so I incorporated those. And then this part up here, you can't really see, but the concept is if any uh, smoke from the steam engines can escape out the top of that. <clears throat> this is looking east. I don't have the track in there anymore yet. Um, this is the, the eventual buildings that will go there. Be another one of my, uh, that's Peter Piper's pickled. I had some crazy name for it, but it, that, that's where that building will go. That'll be another feature when I, all my buildings, as you know, are built on uh, pieces of plywood and I just sink the plywood into the foam. And if I ever move or have to take a structure up, it comes right out. Hey, Tom, uh -huh. I hate to interrupt you, but you've got a question from a modeler that's on the uh, YouTube channel. Okay. What kind of strip wood are you using? It's basswood, it's just Northeastern scale lumbers or Northeastern scale lumber or Lambert's, you know, one of the, they're um, just, it's all, I always work with basswood. Okay. That, that answers the question. Thank you. The big constraint in making this covered bridge I was living in California at the time and I was trying to buy all the wood at a hobby shop and I'd go in and buy all the wood they had that was this size. And eventually I just had the mail order because it just consumed an enormous amount of strip wood. The, uh, Covered bridge. Well, thank you so much for uh, for showing us this tonight. We really do appreciate it. 